Every day I speak to students from grade four to grade 12, I talk about passwords. In the evening with the parents who join me, I talk about passwords. And the majority of my followers online are obviously parents who have kids. Who I don't get to traditionally are their parents. And tonight, I wanna to talk about passwords for your parents. And I'm gonna make this really simple. It's not gonna be complicated at all. And the reason I wanna talk about it is because over the past 11 years, I've heard a lot of stories. Parents passing on, they have a phone, but they can't access it. Parents passing on, they have a computer which has photos in it, personal documents, access to online accounts, and they can't get into it. And sometimes you can eventually retrieve it at a really, really large cost. You might need a specialist who deals with that. And then it can, seriously, it can be very expensive. And tonight I want to alleviate the expense and the hardships associated with it. So I'm going to take you quick, quickly through my idea, which I've been sharing forever, and I subscribe to it myself, on how we can plan for our parents. So I'd like you to share this with your parents, but take the knowledge, give it to them. But if they want to watch the video, by all means, share it. And so basically, we're going to cover uh, three components. Number one, uh, the importance of paper and pen. And I mean that sincerely. We can't depend on technology for everything. And old school, writing it down has tremendous benefits. We're going to talk about quickly securing passwords for everything because password security is the foundation of what little privacy we have online. And then passwords slash estate planning, which is going to be really, really simple, but so incredibly effective. All right, so let's start off with securing passwords. We have passwords for everything. Smartphones, social media, email, bank accounts, literally everything. And the first thing I want to mention is that if you're looking at this screen and then done fine, yeah, I have passwords for all that. If you by default are using the same login and password for all those accounts, that is the first thing we need to change. Remember my rule, one password per login, unique from every other password. The gateway to your online life starts off with a smartphone and or a computer slash laptop, because that is how we traditionally access everything we have online. <clears throat> so we need to secure those before we secure everything else. And I you know, have a saying, if you've seen me before, simple passwords is hackable. Complex passwords equals security. So take a look on the screen. That is a screenshot of an iPhone with a four digit password. You should know that takes about 16 hours to hack into. We need to get rid of simplistic passwords. We need to make them complex. But before we change any passwords, I need you to write them down. And I mean this sincerely. Before you change a password, you write it down legibly, then you enter it into your device, but don't save it right away. Now I want you to triple check the spelling back and forth between what you've written down and what you've entered. Once that is accurate, save the password, and now you have the backup, okay? Don't assume you've entered it correctly. Make sure that what you're looking at, you can understand in about two weeks from now. That's why you always write down passwords of sound mind. So the first passwords we need to change are those two our computers and our phones. Those are the gateway to everything. So they have to be good. I've always said for iPhones, four digits, six digits, not good. For Androids, simple passwords like that combined with fingerprints, facial recognition, don't subscribe to. You know why? If you don't, come to one of my presentations. Every password, I want it to be at least 10 digits or 10 characters, meaning digits and letters long. Let's forget about symbols for now. If we have a good, strong password to get into these devices, we're going down the right path. So for phones, a solid 10-digit password is good enough right now. If you want to mix it up with maybe some numbers and a few letters, great. The harder it is to get in, the better it is. I know, I know that's an inconvenience. I get that. But remember, it takes effort to secure your online life. So we're going to protect, first and foremost, our phones and our computers. Write them down, then make the password changes. Because remember, not only do these devices give you access to stuff online, they contain probably thousands of pictures videos, documents in PDF form, Word file, format, whatever. 
your, the contacts that are in that file. And there's so many other things that are physical that you want to extract from there. Which again, let's say something happened and you didn't have access to it. I could pull out a hard drive out of your computer and I could transfer files over. Again, that costs money, takes a bit of knowledge. Doable, but if you had it written down somewhere, you'd have easier access to it. So now that you've secured the gateway to getting online, we want to make sure that every platform that we are currently accessing online through passwords are awesome. Meaning a strong social, a, a strong password for your social media accounts, not the same login and password for all. Email. A lot of emails are linked to banking, work, whatever. Make sure that has a strong password. Online banking, absolutely. Anyways, we're not going to go through the whole list, but I need you to to change the strategy, which is <clears throat> we're going to create one password for each of these platforms. And remember, write it down. Okay, so now you've taken all that advice. You've changed all your passwords. Now what? Visit the dollar store. And I know a lot of you laugh in my presentation when I say this, but I mean it sincerely. And you've shared with me you've done it. When you go to the dollar store, buy a book. It costs you about two bucks. And what I want you to do in that book, write down every password you have legibly. Do not buy a book that reads password book. That defeats the purpose. You're going to buy a book and if you want to see my book, there it is. Write it down and keep it in a safe place at home. So now write every password in that book and the next thing you're going to do, oh by the way, also before you do that, consider writing them down in a secondary book and keeping them in a safety deposit box at a bank. Just as an insurance policy if you will. But for me, my password book, which is kept in a very secure place in my home, is my insurance policy. Yes, I've memorized many of my passwords and I've got over 140 of them. I've memorized them. They're all very complex. I have a strategy for doing it. Having said that, I write them all down in case, you know, memory failure. I, I rarely use a password. Whatever the case is, I have them written down as my backup. Now, a lot of the pushback I get is, well, Paul, what about a password keeper? And password keepers are great. They're nice to have. Password keepers fail. If a password keeper is on a phone and that phone gets smashed, there go your passwords. What I want you to do is create your own passwords, write them down. If you're going to use a password keeper, again, not against it, but it's not the sole source of keeping passwords. The passwords you create are the ones you're going to put in the password keeper. Do not allow the password keeper to generate the password. The password keeper um, programs out there generate amazingly complex passwords you won't be able to memorize one of them because of their complexity. You can come up with your own strategic way of creating passwords, enter them in the password keeper, back them up over here, and now you have an insurance policy should something happen to the device where the password keeper is. And finally, advise one of your loved ones, hey, when I decide to leave this earth, here is where you can find my passwords to my phones with the pictures of the grandkids, to documents um, that you might need for you know, lawyers, uh, for real estate, investments, all that other stuff. Put it in a secure place and you know maybe every now and again shake it around just in case the kids come snooping for the password book, which they won't of course, but keep it in a really secure place and just let one person know that's where it is. In case something happens, you know to, where to access it. I told you, it's simple. It's easy. You just have to do it. And the reason I was inspired to speak about this is because a lot of people have shared with me how it's truly been beneficial to them in their personal life because they took that simple advice of writing it down. That's all I want you to do. I just want simplicity and I want you to have access to all those photos and those documents which are priceless. You know that as well as I do. So parents, guardians, caregivers, and for your parents who might be seeing me for the first time, thank you. Please share the video, share the knowledge. Have a great day.